Hi friend, David here from Learn Stage Lighting. And today we're continuing our series on environmental lighting, lighting the environment, lighting the room. And here we wanna talk about consoles, okay? Uh, just really give you some best practices and some ways to get the most out of your programming, the most out of your console and out of your room lighting when you're programming with it. So the very first thing we've got to decide is, do we really even need the room lighting in our console? Okay. Um, and to be 100% honest with you, there's going to be a lot of times when environmental lighting or room lighting doesn't need a console. Like some of the most magical and honestly high budget productions that I've done, um, you know, where we took massive amounts of either indoor or outdoor space and covered it with environmental lighting. In a lot of those situations, 90% of that lighting was just static, okay? Like, we just took the fixtures, we pointed them where we needed them, and I'm talking, you know, ellipsoidals and pars, man. You know, not a lot of fancy moving lights. And we took those lights, we plugged them in, we turned them on, we pointed them where we needed them to be, and that was the environment. And it didn't change, and it didn't have to, right? Um, and so, when you're thinking about lighting the environment, I would say, Unless you feel like you need control over some or all of it, just plug it in and leave it be, right? If you don't need to turn it off, just let it be. Um, and and this helps for a couple of reasons, okay? Um, the biggest reason I think that this really helps and really helps you with control is now you don't have to worry about the console stuff, right? So when I've got environmental lighting going on here, Okay, say I'm in my show here on my stage and I realize I want to do a blackout at the end of this song and instead of grabbing like all my faders here, I'm just going to grab the master, blackout. Well, now the room's gone pitch black and what I really wanted to do was just blackout the stage, right? I didn't want to blackout all the room lighting, okay? So if you keep your room lighting either static or on a different console, uh, it's a lot simpler to control. Now, you might be saying, well, David, if I keep it, if I don't have control of it, what's the point? You know, and that's a good point. As we talked about in the last video, a lot of uplights and, and units that are built for environmental lighting, they offer wireless DMX. And so getting control of them into your console in as long as you're not in a chaotic wireless environment is actually a piece of cake, right? Um, because you just turn them on and plug one of them in to be the receipt, the transmitter, or you use a separate transmitter. Um, cause if you're in a more, a slightly congested wireless environment, having a transmitter that's down on the ground is not going to be ideal, but just getting a simple transmitter, you know, get it up, use a, a mic stand or something and just, you know, get it up eight feet in the air or something. And it can make a world of difference for you. Okay. Um, so say you want to get control. How do we handle it in our console now? Right. Um, so the first thing I'm going to do, and literally the first thing that I did with this setup here, and I'm going to shift to, let's see, this camera angle where I can see from the stage out into the room, is I just went ahead and I cloned the units in my console. Now, you guys know, of course, Onyx is generally my favorite console, and you pretty much do have, a, have to have a professional grade console in order to have cloning. And, and cloning is just the process. If you're not familiar with it, um, it's called different things in different consoles, but most often it's called cloning. And cloning is the process where you take a light that's in your show and a new light and you say, okay, I want to take everything from the light that's in my show and copy it, clone it to my new light. Then the new light you're able to program freely on your own. So um, you're able to adjust it after the fact, the new light, right? It's not just doing everything always that the original light's doing, but it copies all the programming so that you're not starting from scratch because you might be like, okay, David, I don't want to have to program a whole bunch of new stuff. I'm just going to run it in standalone mode. And you know, it looks better when it reacts to your show. But the second thing I do, and this is really subtle, but really powerful is I solve this problem. Okay. So say I go and I grab my uplights here. Okay. 
They're right here. Yep, we got them. And say I go, well, let's just hit highlight and I go to white. Okay. Um, and then back to amber. What you can see here, and it's not as vibrant because there's no roof and this isn't a real room. Um, and I haven't spent the time to do all the materials and capture. Um, but what you see is the white is like so much like screaming brighter than the amber, right? And you're going to find this with LEDs all the time, right? With anything. And so what I like to do is go ahead and I'm just going to pull up my different colors here. Go ahead and even out the brightness of the colors, right? Because if it's an average LED unit, um, just an RGB, LED, RGBW, whatever, you know, something like white uses all the colors, right? And I've already shaded this one back a little. I, I call it shading because that's what we call it with cameras. Something like red, green, or blue is just one color of LED. And in a lot of LED fixtures, they're a similar brightness between red, green, and blue. Usually, you know, the red's a little bit strong. Uh, the green's usually pretty strong. The blues are often a little more subdued because it's harder to make really bright blue LEDs. Um, but nicer fixtures, of course, are more even. Regardless, it's when you get to the secondary colors, right? Yellow, red, and green. Magenta, red, and blue. Cyan, uh, green, and blue. That you now have something that's literally twice as bright, right? If, if yellow is red and green at full, that's now twice the brightness. And when you're in your show and you're changing your colors on stage, and then automatically the lights around the room are changing colors, maybe in pairs, maybe every other, um, you now have what's called a problem, right? <laughs> you have a problem. And you have a problem because now it's like you go to a white or to a brighter color, and you now brighten up the room so much if you have a decent amount of lights, that um, it becomes uncomfortable, right? And then you go to a deeper color and it feels dark and you want to even that out. And so it's really just as simple as going into your colors when you're making your color palettes and just going, okay, you know, this red and green right now is a little bright. So I'm just going to take red and green for this yellow and I'm just going to pull them down and find that place where I get a yellow it still looks nice, just a little more green, a little less red, but now it's not significantly different in color. So like, let me just merge in that, that palette, that preset. And now red to yellow is much more manageable. Okay. So evening that out can, can really help a lot. Uh, cause if you don't even out that color in the preset or the palette, you're going to be manually running that fader on the fly. And then you're like, Oh, magenta. Oh, this is bright. Bring that down. Oh, back to blue. Oh, bring it up. You know, and it, it looks awkward, right? Uh, the next step I have is do give yourself a separate intensity fader for those room lights. Uh, depending on the console, depending on your setup, of course, this is going to vary exactly what type of fader it is and how you do it. But having that separate intensity control means, okay, you know, we're in blue here and the band comes to a, a really intimate a really tight look, right? Just, you know, really chill, really soft, really subtle. Okay. And as they come into that number, whether it's worship or, or whatever, you know, maybe you go to blue, but maybe even if they go even softer, you might take down that intensity. You may come out completely. And, and this is on purpose. And this brings in that focus to stage. And then maybe the music flourishes again and you can follow it with the room lighting. Again, it's another layer another element. It's one of those things that I know when I do it and when people I work with do it, it's those things that clients say, wow, that made the difference that made your production company, you know, whatever, uh, better than other people that we've used in the past, because you took that extra time. You took that extra emphasis to bring in the space together. Okay. Um, so you definitely want to adjust that brightness and you can do this. Like I, like I mentioned before, um, if you're worried about, you know, blackouts with your master, create a master fader that doesn't have those lights on it. Okay. Or have them ignore the master. Every console is different as to how they, they accommodate for this. Um, but most professional consoles can do this. And then uh, the last thing is just be really careful when you do use, and if you use your console's update function. Okay. Once you've cloned a light in 
you often have the ability, first of all, to clone it um, to, at the group level, the preset, or the queue level, or all of them. Again, every console is different, but that's how Onyx works, and I know other consoles work the same way. And when you are updating looks, when you are updating colors, etc., just be careful. Make sure you don't accidentally have some of your environmental lights um, selected when you go to update something. Um, because you may end up accidentally, you know, again, brightening the room up to 11. Um, and so that's just one more quick little gotcha to uh, figure out, okay? And then my last tip, again, with console control when we're talking about environmental lighting, is if the lighting is not in the same space as you, um, definitely go back to that first thought that I had and don't control it from the same console. Just don't. I've had, you know, run it standalone, run it from another console. Um, but if you can't see it and it's not in the same room, you just really don't want to control it from your console because one or two things, one of two things are going to happen. One, you accidentally shut it off, do something crazy, um, black out the space and you have no idea that you did it right. And it, people are out in the dark there. Uh, number two is, you know, somebody, whoever's in charge of the lobby keeps coming to you. They go, hey, could you adjust this? And you're like, hey, I'm running a show. You know, stop bothering me. So with that, that wraps up today's video. I hope you enjoyed it and enjoyed our tips today. And come back next week. Subscribe here. Make sure you come back because we're going to be talking about just some really basic tips and tricks for lighting uh, those lobby areas and grand entrances, things like that. It's not just for DJs. We'll hit that next. See you guys. Thanks.